Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome to the first video of the Wolfenstein 3D tutorial. In this video, we're going to start setting up the project, getting things working so that we can, you know, actually start building the Wolfenstein 3D Club. And that all starts with this, getting the 3D game engine. Now, as you may know, I've been doing this big series where I build this huge 3D game engine pretty much from scratch. And this is the source code for that. It's on my GitHub page, github.com slash BennyQBD. And the reason this is important is because we're going to be building the Wolfenstein 3D clone with that 3D game engine as of tutorial 31 in that series. Now, if you haven't been following along with that series and you don't want to follow along, you can download the source code by selecting 3D Game Engine underscore 31. That's the 3D Game Engine. And then just downloading the source and setting it up in your preferred Java editor and project manager and however you, your workflow is. Now, the only really important thing to note there is it does rely on a couple libraries. Under Java Build Path, you'll need to set up Lightweight Java Game Library .jar and slickuto.jar. And Lightweight Java Game Library, you'll need to link to the natives of your appropriate, well, operating system. In this case, I'm on Windows, so I've set it up for the natives on Windows. If you're on Mac or Linux, you'll select the natives for Mac or Linux, and so forth and so on. It's not that hard, and if you really need me to show you, well, I have several videos where I show you how to set that up on my YouTube channel. So, go look there. Go look in some of my other Lightweight Java Game Library videos where I've done stuff with that. And yeah, so that should get you the working project. You should be able to build and run and do whatever. Now, second thing you'll need is you'll need some notes. And you might be wondering, hey Benny, why on earth am I gonna need to take notes for this? Well, this is going to be a tutorial on building Wolfstein 3D clone, and that's going to be the big focus of it. But additionally, this series is going to sort of be a criticism by example, if you will, of our 3D game engine as is. We're going to show just how painful and impractical 3D development really is with our game engine as is. Not that it's really that terrible, but... You'll see how big this list gets by the time we're finished, let's just say that. And when we're done, we're going to have a lot to rearrange and change with our 3D engine in that series. So, yeah, you're probably going to want to take some of your own notes, and you're probably going to notice some things that I haven't. And this is a good opportunity for you to say, Hey Benny, why don't you do whatever, because that would make your current system so much better. Or, you know, whatever else you want to do. So yeah, and those are the two really big things you'll want to have set up for this. So with that, I'm going to take my 3D Game Engine project, and I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it as Wolfenstein 3D Clone. And you can call your project whatever. So now I officially have my copy of the project that will be, well, the Wolfenstein 3D clone eventually. And, yeah, so I'm just going to close out of that, and I'm going to go to the source code, where apparently I have warnings, but that's fine, I think. And I'm just going to load up the game class and hit run to make sure everything's working. And it doesn't know how to run, so I guess I'll have to select main component first, and hit run. And there you go. So it's a 3D game engine, just as it was left off, well, Almost just. I adjusted some of the lighting parameters slightly, you may have noticed. But pretty much the exact same thing as it was when we finished Tutorial 31 of the 3D Game Engine series. Now, before I jump in and start coding, there's one thing that I think is going to be very, very important to mention. This is not a programming tutorial. The focus of this series is not going to be coding. There will be quite a bit of coding, since our big interface for engine right now is code. But, whoops. But 
that's not the focus of this series. The focus of the series is how to develop a game using this 3D engine we put together in that other series. So, this means a few things. First off, I'm not going to be doing too much hand-holding with all the actual coding, because again, that's not the focus. And two, since this is a game development series, I'm going to be spending video times on some things that are very distinctly not code. And more importantly, I'm going to be approaching this from an approach that's very much not a coding approach, if you will. And I'm bringing this up right now because the very first thing I'm going to do is a very non-coding sort of thing to do. I'm going to completely delete everything in our game class, and I'm going to start setting up this class to be sort of a scratch pad, because when I'm doing game development, that's my workflow. I always want to have something set up to be sort of just a scratch pad, some place where I can just quickly etch out an idea without really having to think of where it fits into the whole picture. I find that very important in any sort of artistic thing I'm doing with gaming, coding stuff included, so that's what I'm going to be doing right off the bat. So I've just cleared the game class, now I hit run, and now absolutely nothing happens. Except our frame rate drops terrible because of my recorder, but that's fine. So, yeah. And now that we've done all this, this brings us to our first sort of thing that could be improved for our engine. Ideally, the way our system's set up, we have our engine and our engine package, and I can just start setting up my code wherever. I can set up my own scratch pad class and do whatever I want there, and then just use all the engine with the engine class and stuff. But I can't, because our game engine depends on this game class. Everything I want the everything I want the engine to do must be done in this game class. So right off the bat, I'm limited to not only working in the engine's workspace, but I have to use the class that the engine provides. I can't provide my own class. I can't use the engine almost like a library. So, welcome to note number one, before we even write our first line of code. We need some way of being able to ent insert our own game into the engine. So, some I'll just put a little dash and say, some way to insert game into engine. There we go. Very first thing, and I want to just put there. So, yeah. And with that all set up and done and whatever, now I'd like to just very, very briefly, since I've spent most of the video setting up at this point, just start working on our first topic. Now, whenever I'm doing game development, my biggest priority is to get something that works as quickly as possible. And one of the biggest ways I do that is I play to the strengths of whatever technology I'm using as much as I possibly can. And the reason I bring this up is because for this 3D game engine that we have, what I want to do is I want to play to whatever its biggest strength is as much as I can in order to get this game running as quickly as possible. So the biggest strength of our 3D engine by far is the 3D renderer itself. It can do 3D graphics pretty well, all things considered. So, the first thing I'm going to try doing is I'm going to try to get levels working. So, I'm going to open paint.net, and I'm just going to go ahead and start creating a level. I'm going to start with a 32 by 32 image, and this is going to be a map of how the level is going to be laid out. So, there we go. I'm going to change the zoom level to, oh, 1200? That's good enough. And here's how this is going to work. To start off with, my level scheme is going to be pretty simple. Anything that's black is a wall. Anything that's white is not. So, I'm going to fill the scene with black, and I'm just going to start drawing. I'm going to draw a room. I'm going to draw a hallway, draw another room, and this probably isn't going to make it into the final thing, but it will show, well, how can we get level working? Maybe I have, I don't know, something in the middle like that. Maybe I'll just keep drawing. And yeah, I'm just making things up right now, 
but you could seriously try designing a level like this if you really want to. I'd personally wait until we had more specified than white is a wall, black is not. Wait, black's a wall, white is not, but, you know. And I'm just going to draw one final hallway thing with a wall in the middle, why not? And there. I'm not really trying to make a good level, in case you haven't noticed, but I'm just trying to get something that shows a fair variety of different conditions and should be workable. So there we go. That's something level-esque in a nutshell. And this is going to be our test level, so I'm just going to save to my desktop, yes, as level1.png. And there you go. So that's the first part of our engine, pretty much, or our game, pretty much set up. We don't have much yet, we haven't even written any code, but we do have our first example level set up. We have an engine that actually works, and we have our first few notes about how our engine isn't doing what we want to. And I'm sorry, this needs to be more out like that, or that's going to bother me. And this needs to be more like that too. Sorry. I have sort of, I just need to be this. I have level OCD, okay? So yeah, and this needs to be this. Okay, that's it, I promise. <laughs> and with that, that's just about all I want to do in this very first video. Like I said, there, this is not that much done yet, but we still accomplished a pretty fair bit. I know it's not the most exciting intro video in the whole world, but We've got a fair bit set up, we've got a clear direction of where we want to go now, we're definitely going to start setting up the level, and we're going to start doing that in the next video. So thank you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you next time.